<laughs> How will I convince you that I'm a doctor? The traditional way. This is how we're going to do the video today. Uh, I think even actors have this thing, so yeah. My name is Dickens and I'm a doctor in Kenya. That's not normally how I start my videos, but as you can already guess, this is a different one. For all you folks who may not already know, I'm kind of a mid-level doctor in Kenya as I'm currently a third year resident. And that means that I'm training to be a specialist and I have just about one year left before I become an orthopedic surgeon. Let's talk about what it takes to reach this level and beyond. Oh, and uh, stick to the end where I'll be showing you my payslip if you get lucky. So what's the journey been like? We could go all the way back to start from the day I was born. But from my analytics, it appears like a lot of you guys drop out like avocados when the tree is shaken when the video goes past five or so minutes. So let's just start by qualifying for medical school. I joined the University of Nairobi Medical School in 2008. The exact date, I believe, was 21st of October, which is like a few days ago. The requirements to join the program then were quite competitive. You needed to have scored quite highly in the final high school examination called the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education, you actually needed at least an airplane, which is the highest grade one can attain in that examination. And to add insult to injury, you actually needed a bunch of A's in at least four key subjects, and those were biology, chemistry, a language, and either mathematics or physics. And to achieve the maximum number of points that were calculated by the Joint Admissions Board each year. For our year, I guess the weighted cluster points that were required were 47.7 out of a possible 48. However, there was a Module 2 program offered by the university which was famously known as the Parallel Program and that's basically a self-sponsored program that one could get in if they so wished or if they didn't want to wait for the two or so years we had to chill out selling mangoes and bananas in the streets waiting to join medical school or if they hadn't qualified to get the more competitive Module 1 program that was government sponsored. That's not to mean that it was just a walk in the park to get into the Module 2 program. One actually still needed quite some high grades. Anyway, that was then and a number of things have changed since then. There's the fact that there's more medical schools in Kenya currently with the number standing at a whooping 12, while there were only two. That's the University of Nairobi and Mo University back in our day. It makes sense then that the requirements for securing a spot in there might not be as tough right now. For example, from the Moi University website, which I guess is usually updated like when there's a solar eclipse or something, I see that the admission requirements demand for at least a KCSE score of an A with at least an A- in those four subjects and a weighted cluster point of 45 and above. You could still get into medical school with less scores than that. Kenyatta University, for example, I see advertising slots for folk who have obtained a minimum of a C in KCSE with Bs in the said subjects and so goes for other universities. Now, those requirements in university websites are usually mostly for getting into their self-sponsored programs, but for the government-sponsored program, the placement is currently done by a central body called the KUCCPS. Kenya University, Kenya University Central, uh, Central what? Central Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service. I don't know, something like that. KUCCPS. And the cutoff points are still quite high depending on the demand in various universities. Now, let me also mention that what I've just discussed so far is not the only way to get into a medical school in Kenya. For instance, guys with diplomas in clinical medicine and those who studied under other systems in other countries can also get in. You just need to find out the requirements. That said, assuming you finally sneak yourself into medical school, you currently need to brace yourself for six years of undergraduate study. I guess I was lucky because during my time, the program at the University of Nairobi was five years long, the shortest in the country at that time. Currently, there's no way out. You have to study at least six years of medicine. And ideally, that should be intertwined with constant prayer and fasting. 
that local events like lecturer strikes and global events like the COVID thing don't see you doing up to two years, unfortunately. How I find a good afternoon, heaven. Dino, dino, that's a don't cry. Dino, blind. Some of you may be asking, what is it exactly that this medic study for six years and yet other undergraduate courses in universities last even three years? The answer is simple. It's a lot. And by the time you're done, you really don't know that much as you'll discover later when you join postgraduate studies to specialize in one area of medicine. Most medical schools will teach you the basic sciences, also called the preclinical sciences, for the first two or so years. And... Those are subjects like human anatomy, medical physiology, and so on. And uh, then you start doing your clinical rotations where you learn by actually seeing patients in the various departments for the rest of your time. Fast forward, six years later, you graduate in your dark black gown and a hat looking like a witch or a wizard. You'll spend the next one year as a medical officer intern in a hospital in Kenya. And after that, lo and behold, you become a fully fledged doctor also called a medical officer, ready to start paying annual fees to the medical board, assuming they actually accept to register you. At this point, let me mention again that that's not the only pathway to be a registered doctor in Kenya. The medical board also accepts credentials from other countries that may meet their requirements. But one may still have to do that one year of internship locally. Most people will usually work as a medical officer where they are really like general practitioners seeing all sorts of patients for about two to four years before they venture into postgraduate school where they train to be specialists, typically receiving a master's degree at the end of the hustle. The duration of study here varies with surgical specialties usually taking longer than non-surgical specialties and once again depends on which university one goes to. For example, at the moment, my specialty orthopedic surgery is a four-year course in Moi University, while the same program in the University of Nairobi takes five years. Pediatrics, for example, could take three or four years, while neurosurgery calls for an investment of a clean six years without batting an eyelid. Of note also is that the master's programs are not the only way to go. There are also fellowship programs in surgical fields, like the ones offered by the College of Surgeons of East Central and Southern Africa, their course structure is usually a bit different from the university master's programs, but the duration is more or less the same. So again, let's assume you become like myself at some point next year, God willing, and uh, you finish your master's, you'll be ready to be registered as a specialist surgeon, for example, and you can decide and declare that that is the end of your education and burn all your books in an open flame like an offering. But that's up to you because it's not the end of the journey. You could still specialize in an even smaller part of your field, for instance, by taking up a fellowship program or even a PhD if you have enough brain cells left after the 15 years or so you've already invested in medicine. Anyway, that may be a video for another day. For now, let me pull out my pay slip where is it because we are finally at that part of the video where we've been skipping forward trying to find and yet i usually have timestamps down here in the description so that you don't have to struggle finding something in the video but as you head over down to the description below there's a hard to miss big old red button called subscribe if you haven't already why don't you just take a minute and smash the heck out of it because you don't deserve to miss any of my productivity and digital life videos that I make every week. And don't spare that bell that is next to that sub button. Turn it blue so that you are the first to be notified anytime I upload a new video. Welcome aboard. So yeah, the first time you'll see a coin come your way if you decide to get into medical school in Kenya is when you become a medical officer intern after your undergraduate studies. How much you ask? Well, in the public service in Kenya currently, interns join the medical army at no job group at least according to the revised scheme of service for medical officers dental officers and pharmacists from 2016 but anyway interns are usually paid as in job group l medical officers usually start at job group m you can google those job groups but i know someone is already commenting that how much exactly is that we want figures and sure figures is what you'll get but a point to note first is that the best I can give is approximations or baselines because of various factors like number one, 
because doctors in Kenya are employed by different counties and not one specific body, it's true that not all counties pay exactly the same and some, for example, might employ a doctor at a higher job group than others. Secondly, in many cases, doctors working for private hospitals, parastatals or non-governmental organizations may make more than those in the trenches, so to speak, even more than 50% extra in some cases. That out of the way, a doctor in Kenya will usually earn from as little as less than 100,000 shillings to maybe over 400,000 shillings per month, depending on what kind of doctor they are, where they work and such other factors. That's really not much compared to the package in some other countries, you know, South Africa and so on. And really, that's the reason you will see doctors rallied up in their union trying to get their collective bargaining agreements implemented as most employers don't even pay doctors what they agreed to. All in all, this was just to throw some light on the subject for those always asking me to also make some videos about medicine. I hope you've got an overview of what it takes to be a medic in this our land and nation. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you liked it, don't be shy, just like it. There's a like button, you know, as always. See you in the next one.